Mike here from the Virtual Fly Fishing Academy. Um, I want to talk to you today about fly floating. Uh, for a lot of people, I've known people that have been fly fishing for decades and, and still can't get a grip on fly floating. And uh, if you're new to angling or you're new to fly fishing in general, fly floating is pretty important. Uh, and, and, and a lot is not known about it. You hear it commercially, you hear people pushing their products and whatnot. Uh, but fly floating is, is really, really important. It's a multi-million dollar industry. Everywhere, every fly fishing department you go to, no matter if it's a box store like uh, Cabela's or, or Bass Pros or it's a, your local fly shop, they're going to have fly floatings everywhere. And it confuses a lot of people. So today what I want to do is, is unconfuse it for you. Uh, so there's a reason why we have fly floatings. Uh, and it's like I said, it's a multi multi million dollar industry that employs thousands of people. Uh, it's it's critical in our industry that we use fly floating, because in reality, if your fly is not floating, your dry if your dry fly is not floating, you're not going to be catching any fish. And the reason is is because dry flies have to make an impression or an image uh, on the surface film or meniscus. Uh, so the trout really can't see a fly very well underwater. It, there's a mirror, it's at distance, they're nearsighted. But what, what's really triggering them in the trigger mechanism is, is the impression that fly is making on the meniscus. Now, trout really has very little or no cognitive thought, and uh, it knows if it sees an impression in the surface film, it's now triggered to think that that might be a, a, a food source and it's going to rise to take a look at it. Uh, that's the importance of, of, of fly floating. We have to float our fly, especially in freestone rivers. So there's a, a myriad of fly floatings. Uh, I think one of the most important fly floatings out there is dry shake fly floating, especially if you're a freestone river fisherman. Uh, and you're, you're fishing these freestones in the mountains. Uh, these fish, you know, uh, uh, um, the majority of their food source comes from the surface film. And at that point, we have to keep our, 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 our fly high and dry on the water, where it's literally floating tackle tips on top. Uh, and what dry shake does, it does two things. It, number one is it actually dries your fly. And that's this product right here. You can tell it's dry shake because it's making a noise. Well, there's two things in there. There's little uh, hardened crystals that actually absorb water, uh, very much like uh, uh, the same crystals in potting mix. Uh, they'll absorb water and hold water for the plant. Uh, the same thing with, with dry shake, fly floating. And inside, uh, also the second component inside, is a hydrophobic uh, uh, silicone powder. And that's going to uh, 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 whisk or, or, or waterproof your fly for a certain uh, uh, distance along the river. So, so this is what I, I think is, is really important, both in freestones and tailwater rivers. It really is going to pop your fly up there and really give that fly the impression you want. So if you're looking to really, really have a really crisp dry fly on there, uh, uh, dry shake your, 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 your ticket. And all you do is stick it in, leader and all, right off the top of your leader, stick it in, close the clock, uh, shake it up for a minute, Take it up, blow it off, and you're fly fishing. And how long uh, between casts do you need to put this back on again? It's 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 quite frequent. Uh, you're you're maybe a si every six or seven cast you need to redo that. Uh, so this is really really important. And and in conjunction with that, there's a uh, uh, and this one's called uh, 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 frogs. You can get it called frog. This is loon. Certainly, you can use a, a myriad of, of dry shake products out there. Now, this one has no dry shake. I mean, has no shake to it. It's pure powder. It's pure, pure hydrophobic silicone powder. And when you take the top off, there's a little brush in there. And what that brush? This is for specifically using CDC. That's that's cold of the card. Uh, winged flies, and that's a little tight, tiny feather in, in a uh, in the duck in the, near the preen gland. It's really fluffy. And when it gets wet, it just falls all apart. What the brush does is it just brushes that back out, and, and that's the floating part of the fly. That's what keeps the fly on the water. And you can certainly recharge your dry shake with your with your uh, um, floating. The next one I have here, and this this is crazy. You see, the, if you look at these, and we'll give you a, a closer picture, but there's all different types of little bottles. And if you look at the way I carry, uh, I use a lanyard. I have mine hanging from my lanyard, like that. 
uh, bottle down. Uh, this too confuses a lot of people. Uh, what is in these bottles and, and what's the purpose of these bottles? Well, let's talk about the purpose first. Uh, it's like Scotchgard. That's what these bottles are. They're like Scotchgard. Uh, you, take, you, you go to the market and you buy a can of Scotchgard spray and you spray your raincoat or you spray your tent. And, and what it does is whisk water away. And uh, this is what these do too. Uh, and there's two basic types. There's a gel, a real thick gel, and there is a, a, a really uh, viscous type. Uh, and what they do is, is act like a scotch guard. And they don't prevent water from going into your fly so much as it, they allow when you're back casting okay, to whisk the water off your fly so that when your fly lands on the water, it's going to land dry before it gets wet again. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of these guys really working a fly when they're a, a, a dry fly. That's to whisk that water off their, their uh, uh, fly. Now, uh, the third component is what we call a hard paste. And again, we'll get you some close-ups of this so you can take a look at it. A hard paste is pure hard paste silicone, uh, 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 hydrophobic silicone and uh, you would apply this and it would be the same thing. Now, how you apply these uh, techniques uh, or these products onto your fly is you put them on your finger. You take the product and you put it on your finger and then you move your finger together and you add it to your fly that way. So what's the difference between say a gel uh, like this uh, Loxaw Loon and a Gink which is uh, probably ginks are the number one seller. What's the difference between the two? Well, this one is a gel, and this one is very viscous, uh, like, like 30 weight mo motor oil. Uh, and the, the advantages and disadvantages are that in the winter time, uh, this will freeze sometimes, or very, it'll freeze hard, and get real thick and hard to get out, where a gel won't. You can use gel uh, year round. I prefer the gel, and that's what I, what I uh, uh, currently use. Uh, so it's a matter of you not so much looking at all these little things on the shelf because every manufacturer is going to tell you that theirs does this and theirs does that, blah, 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 blah. What you're really looking for is either a viscous uh, or a gel. Now when we get to this part, this hard silicone, uh, and this is called Loon Loxaw Paste, but you get Mucklin, and there's another, other products out there. It's, it kind of reminds me of, of uh, paraffin wax, except a much softer. Uh, what this is designed for is you put it on your finger, too, and, and dab it in. But more what I use this for is I put this on my fly line and my, fly, and my, uh, my leader, you know, a large portion of my leader. I'll, I'll actually coat this leader in this and my and my fly line with, with uh, a coating of uh, this hydrophobic uh, 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 hard uh, silicone and I'll just lay it in there and pull it through a couple times like that uh, because from time to time your the, the very uh, tip of your uh, 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 fly line and, and where it joins your leader a lot of times your fly line gets wet and it, and it starts to sink and, and when your leader, and when your fly line and your leader sink, it's going to start sinking your whole line in your fly. So it's a good idea to, to uh, coat your fly line a good six or seven feet from your uh, uh, junction of your leader and then a good portion of your leader. But, but don't go too far down your tippet. You know, leave, leave that uh, uh, untouched. Uh, so there's a myriad of, of different types of fly floating. Uh, everybody has their own... Uh, uh, a concoction. Everybody has their own preference. Certainly uh, what you've heard from me is more of a subjective, my opinion type thing, but this is how I've done my whole fish, fly fishing career. And uh, uh, I have to use fly floating to be successful. So a couple questions right quick I get is this. Uh, how often do I have to use fly floating? Uh, well, you use it as you need it. Um, another one is, do I use a liquid and a dry shake? together? Uh, no. You never use these together uh, because you're just going to get a big glob. Use one or the other. So a, a good practical way of saying this is when I arrive at the river 
and I uh, am ready and I'm all ready to go. I got my fly on, dry fly on, I'm walking down to the river. Uh, before I go down to the river, I'm going to use a liquid. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, and then while I'm on the river and my fly starts getting wet, I will go to the dry shake. But I don't do them uh, uh, together at the same time. Uh, as I come back to the vehicle or I'm going to move down another half mile or so, I might put a liquid back on it. <coughs> Certainly if I'm changing flies, uh, I want to redo everything again. And then uh, the, probably the last question I get is what about emergers? Do I use fly floating on emergers? And yeah, you do, but if you have an emerger pattern where where some of your emerger pattern is above the water and some of the emerger pattern is below the water, what we call a hatching emerger, you would want to put floating on the part that you see but not on the bottom. Uh, and that would, those are the two most common questions. So if you're not using fly floating, uh, uh, hopefully this will help you kind of understand a little bit of how fly floatings work. Uh, I think everybody should have them. Uh, it's as simple as maybe keeping two with you. And, and, and really dressing, we call it dressing our, our flies and our lines. And it's, it's part of, of maintenance. It's part of maintaining your leader. It's part of being a really good fly fisherman.